Yep, I have two questions for you. And the first one, if you're not ready, that's okay, because we'll find other questions. Um, but I want to ask you about um, the Workforce Innovation Act and um, rules that were promulgated or guidances that were promulgated under the Obama administration and how it affected people with different abilities after they left high school and before they were age 25. Um, and whether you have any plans to change the Obama era situation, which as I see it, uh, could be very harmful to people with different abilities in that they cannot be uh, recommended or advised to go to work centers. And as I understand it, a lot of people out there therefore are kind of sitting at home, losing skills, losing social opportunity. Are you familiar with that situation? Are you speaking of the competitive integrated employment issue? Correct, yes. correct. Um, this is a, a matter of great interest and concern to me, and it's one we are looking at closely. Um, there are groups and individuals that have uh, re, you know, come from both sides of this issue and have strong arguments um, on both sides, and so it is uh, a guidance piece that I'm looking at closely and have not yet reached any kind of conclusion. Have you toured any, I guess they call them work centers now, but are sometimes called, uh, I guess I guess now they call them work centers, they used to call it sheltered workshops. Have you had an opportunity to tour any of these, either in this area or in Michigan area? I have not. I'll just ask you, because as long as I've been involved in this, I always have a, I always worry about people with different abilities. And, um, I think if you tour some of these work centers, and I would tour two or three, you know, just go back home, and it seems to me in Wisconsin we have about one for every county. Um, next time you're back in Michigan, I, I would ask you to spend one or two hours at a couple of these work centers or what used to be called sheltered workshops. Uh, look at the people who work there as well as the employees who work there, and think what happens if we take some people kind of out of the game between age 22 and 25. Would you do that for me? You won't regret it. It'll be an enjoyable experience. I would, I would welcome that opportunity. Okay. Now we're on to the next question. Um, I, I, would, I would like you, I'd like to thank you for taking a stand and trying to reduce the department's budget by $7.7 .7 billion. And I'll give you a question I asked at the prior hearing. I don't expect you to know the answer, but I want you to guess. Do you know how much, how much the federal government is borrowing of the current year's budget? Um, I heard this figure the other day, but I'm sure you know. Um, the current year's budget, 15%? 20, over 20%, 22%. And I, I, it's so easy to not care about the next generation. And so many people in this building don't care at all about the next generation or the, or the grandchildren down the line. They just love to pose for holy pictures and say they want to spend more money now. So, but I thank you for being one of the few people hanging around Washington who does care about their children and grandchildren. And I appreciate you making a modest 10.8% cut. Do you know how that cut's going over in the Appropriation Committee? Um, well, I know that many of the recommendations have not been adopted by the appropriators, um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't attempt to do the right thing on behalf of taxpayers and stay focused on the core mission of the And not only taxpayers, on our children and grandchildren, right? I have seven now, so I. I, uh, I Congratulations, can that. that's wonderful, and I'm glad you want to protect them. And as you're finding out now that you're in Washington, all sorts of elected officials are not are not that caring as you are. Um, but would you say then there's a disagreement between the Trump administration and the Republican Congress as to how much money we should be uh, spending in the next year? Well, I think I would encourage members of Congress to think in the big picture and broader term. Uh, um, a lot more than it seems. Would you say it's happen. accurate to say that the Trump administration is looking out for the children and grandchildren? It's about time the Republican Appropriations Committee got with the program. <laughs> I think I think there are some lessons to be learned, and I think we should be cognizant of the future and 
what the implications are for kids and our kids and grandkids. Well, don't be afraid to set up an appointment with some of those appropriators and try to get them in shape. Thanks much.